talk with you about version control today. Um, yeah, I call it also your project safety net. First of all, it's maybe my phone. Okay. Um, <laughs> so first of all, yeah, um, version control. I want to get to know my audience. Who of you has ever heard of version control? Who of you is using version control every day or sometimes? Okay, quite a few. Okay, for these people, yeah, uh, I will talk about version control, maybe also some aspect which you might not have known yet. And for everyone else, let's try to figure out what version control actually is and how it can be useful to you in your projects. Okay, so I've been uh, working uh, on my computer today and other days as a software developer and doing that in teams with different people, working on projects, working on many files in many different folders and there it can get messy. But there's one thing which helped me all the way along and this is version control and today I want to show you how it can help you as well. Good, so let's take a look at some project uh, which we might start first on our own and then later also together with other people and we've got some folders in the, a folder in there, we've got some files, also got some images, that's like just an example, small project, yeah? And we then, in this case, sorry, I have to turn my hand, <laughs> like that. And um, yeah, so we have this project and then we might work on one file um, and go along but say, hey, we still want to keep this one little bit and don't want to delete that because maybe we need it later. So we create a copy of that folder, right? And then we go on and continue and maybe there's something else. We just change one file but we want to keep it. We create a new folder. And another one. And another one. And, but this is the last one, right? It's the final version. We will not do any changes after that, right? Yeah. So usually that happens and again and so on. And this is just an example I brought up because actually my personal examples, for example, a bachelor thesis would be just too embarrassing <laughs> to show here, would be too long. Who of you actually like, is, like, thinks such a thing might have happened to you as well at some point in your life? Oh, quite a lot of people, right? But the good news is, whenever you did that, you created your own version control system. Because that actually, you're taking your versions, different versions of your project, and somehow control the flow of them. You give names to different versions and somehow have it in some sort of order. But what is when you want this one little thing out of this one small file? Is there any chance to find it again somewhere in all of this mess? Probably not, right? So here's where the version control system comes in here. And I call it like a safety net for your project. So you can imagine your project. Yeah, it's dancing on a line in a circus and you have everything in control, but then you forget one thing, but the version control is there to save you as your safety net. You fall, but the version control system is there. Okay, what is your version control system actually? So it keeps a history of all of your different versions which you worked on in your past. And it has a lot of different extra tools for you, this space. Good, who of you knows Google Docs? Right, yeah, almost every one of you. That you, there you can work on one file simultaneously. Like here you see two different people working on the same file at the same point in time. But maybe not every one of you knows about this other, like when you click on top there, you can actually get to the version history section of uh, Google Docs. So there you can actually see a history on the right, on the right hand side, you see Google Docs is automatically storing you different versions of your project where you can go back to and you can then recover stuff. On the left hand side you see um, different versions of people color highlighted. And that's, maybe you all wondered, like I saw online, many people really wondered, why is there no safe button yeah, in Google Docs? There's no safe, what? Yeah, that's because Google Docs is keeping your versions, it's saving it for you. You don't need a safe button yourself but there's a version control system behind it. Good, so Google Docs is something cool when you work on one file simultaneously, but let's look at something where you can work um, together with many different people on many different files and many different folders. 
then you want a version which is local. And for that, you would have your local folder, and you would have some hidden folder in there where your version control system, your safety net, is storing all your versions. And then you've also got, and then, and on the, uh, and here on the right hand side, uh, I just show you how it looks like when we do our naive version control approach. And now I want to compare the two. So, when I start with my first version, I can add a name to it. Uh, a name how I can remember what I did in this version. And, uh, and that's like, here I have the version separately stored, and also who did that version. So here I've got a small emoji of an astronaut with a mustache, because that's kind of what I dreamt to be at some point. Didn't work out that, that way. But uh, in Google Docs, you can also actually give a name to your version. And so that's the same way um, you can do it in a version control system. You can change the dates to names. Good. And then the whole thing comes in a kind of a tree, because that's how in a version control system, all your versions you can imagine of being set along each other in a big tree and growing as you go on, and they cannot be changed. So each version builds on the other one. That you can change them, that's more a like, sophisticated way of using it, but we'll stick to that. Okay, now it gets interesting. You add a second version. Yeah? And now in the second version, I want to uh, include an intro of a cat, and now we already see a first difference of in the version control system, we've just our one folder, and the hidden folder, VCS stands for version control system, so it's the folder holding version control system. And on the right hand side, we see we have um, already two folders, because we created a copy. And this goes up into the tree. And we can create more and more versions, and now it's the eighth version, and then even someone else could come in. Another person adds a version, and, and changes the files, and even another person undoes the change. <laughs> and, but you've got, with all these messages, a history of who did what. And you see on the right hand side that when you do it naively, you've already got a lot of many copies of your project. And for example, all the images and image folder, they were all copied again and again. In the version control system, we've got just one folder. They are at this hidden version control system folder. Okay, sounds good. In a moment we will talk about what's actually inside this version control system folder, which holds kind of the magic, and how it works, that we can have all of this history of versions where we can jump back to and forth without actually having all of these different folders. So now even the rock is happy, so he can read the messages and come back and forth. Um, but uh, let's quickly review Let's quickly recap what the benefits are. So we see that actually with a version control system, we can have infinitely many versions, uh, but for that we need infinitely many folders. And uh, sorry, that's when we do it by hand. And when we have a version control system, we can have as many versions as we want, and we just keep this one folder with our project. Plus this additional version control system folder, which we'll look at in a moment. And then we also see, when you copy all of the files, it gets big, data-wise. And, and with the version control system, you use less disk space, right? But there's still, you've still got all these versions. So how does this actually work? And what's inside this version control system folder? Let's take a look how this works. Who of you does know any version control systems? Um, do you know any names of them? I think you were first. Git is a famous one. Anyone know another one? Yes. SVN. SVN, yeah. Subversion. So there are some of them, some of them out there. These are the three most popular ones. So there are a lot of different ones. It's actually a big space, yeah, um, with a lot of ver different ones. And I put in Google Docs there. It's not a version control system, but it has one under the hood. And we will take a look at Git now. That's the most um, successful and the most widely used one. And it got a lot of, and you see how popular it is because GitHub, that's like a cloud version of it, just recently got acquired by Microsoft for a really high price, and just shows you how important these systems are. Good. So let's take a look. How could that actually work now to save space in our file? So instead of copying all of these different folders, and when we change just one word, 
in one file, you know? And, but we want to keep some of the changes and keep the version. We would copy the entire folder in our naive approach. What if, if we just only store the changes with it? So we only store if there was one word changed, and then we change something else, and we store only that change. And, th and then we change it again, we store that change, and we don't have to copy entire huge files, we only change small bits. And in the end, we put everything together so that it, again, makes sense in one file as a version control system. Sounds reasonable, right? But that's not what Git is doing. Uh, can you think of why that might not, what, what could be a downside of that approach? Any ideas? Um, yes? Processing for power. Exactly. So you see, it's a really complicated, pro uh, complicated thing to do. If you have differences of files, and then you have to remember, OK, once you deleted everything, then you put something back, then you change the name of the, and, and so on. And in the end, you have to put everything together. It's a really complicated process. And you've never got your real file, the real file, which is your current version, on your system. You always first have to compute it. So that's why Git, in particular, as a version control system, chose a different approach. They say, when you make a change, even a small one, we copy this very file, but we will never copy all of the other files that you have. Not all of the other image files and so on. But we can compare very fast whether your new, like all, all the files of your new version, which ones have you changed and which ones not. So how does Git do that? All right, so for every, each and every file, it creates a so-called hash. It's a representation of just a string of 40 characters of the contents of your file. So everything in there gets a hash. And with that, you can, if the content is uniquely identified, that's not only text, that's also every picture. Every picture gets such a hash. And in the end, you just have to compare hashes. So even if you have documents and they're just different in one single letter, like here, the first letter is different, the hash the resulting string is completely different. And, um, and that's really useful because you then only have to compare the hashes. And you, for example, if only the last word of your file was changed, you, um, the version control system has not had to go through the entire 1,000 or so lines to check whether uh, the document is different in the new version to the old one. It could just compare the 40 characters and see that the document is, di um, is different. So each and every document in your folder receives a hash. And, for example, this is my first version, which is all of these hashes. And then, now I change only this one file, this report file here in red. <coughs> and my second version would then get a new hash there, but all the other hashes would remain the same. So even also all of the folders, all of the files would not be copied, but just that one would be recreated. Let's take a look inside the version control system folder. And here we see in the first version, we've got all of these files in there recreated. So actually when you begin your project with a version control system, then you have a bit more data than your project. Kind of you have double the amount of disk storage of your project, but when you copy some file or just change one file, only this one file is recreated and not all of the other files which would be done in a naive approach. So after you create like the third version already, you save this space and that's especially useful when, uh, especially when you share your project or working on it with many different people because many different people put in many different changes. It will get a lot of versions and that's it makes it possible to work effectively. Okay, so I talked a lot about version control system very theoretically and so on, and you must be thinking, okay, man, Andre, yeah, but how could I ever use that if I'm not a programmer and raised my hand in the beginning, and I have the feeling you're only talking to these guys of people. No, I'm, uh, I want to show you there are a lot of nice uh, graphical user interfaces where you can begin to use version control with any kind of project today. And I give you just one example, that's source tree. Um, I don't want to make any advertisement for it, just free software. Uh, and here you could like, take any folder of your project and just 
drag it in there, and boom, your project is already version controlled. And when you're inside there, for example, as I did in the example before, I'm changing only one file, this uh, project file. And here I'm deleting half of the project because I'm kind of fed up with it. No, it was bad. But I might still want to keep this change and use it later. I never know. And so this would be my change. And the only real important word you need to know now uh, to get going with Git, and this one is a commit. A commit stands for a new version. And so here you see on the top left, there's the commit button. When you press that, you can also put in a name, as you saw before, a name for your version. You press commit, and that version is saved. And with that program, you can always go back to your versions, jump back and forth, and then it has a lot of more tools to offer how to work together in a big team. And that only, in the end, makes it even possible for people, for software teams and for other teams working projects to be spread around all over the world and to still being able to control exactly what they're doing, to know exactly who did what, where and when, to have complete, to have a complete overlook over everything and with kind of having all of this detailed information uh, you think, oh no, everyone knows exactly what that is. No, it actually frees up a lot because you can be spread over wherever you want and work together effectively. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, André. Um, any questions for André about version control? Uh, there is at the back, the mic. So, uh, does Git handle hash collisions? And if yes, then how? Uh, okay, so uh, what, is a, what is a hash collision? Uh, so we have got these hashes, as you saw, these strings of 40 characters, and we saw that, uh, I told you, they are unique. Every single document you have gets a unique uh, string. But this is an algorithm, yeah, which tries to do that and does it almost all of the time, but not each and every time. And then if you have uh, two documents, different documents, and they turn out to have the same 40 character string, you have a hash collision. Uh, okay, that's just to get everyone at first on the page of what this question is about. And now the question was, does the system actually handle that and what does it do in that case? And I must tell you, I'm not exactly sure <laughs> uh, how it handles that. It happens, uh, like it, uh, it happens very, very rarely. And uh, just as an addition to that, because it happens so rarely, actually, you don't, almost never, on most computer systems, you don't have to use the whole length of all of these 40 characters, because just a part of that, maybe even six or eight of these characters, are enough, most of the time, to uniquely identify all of your different files. Uh, because there are already, already millions uh, or billions of different combinations uh, so, like, you need to try out until you get such a collision. Maybe another question, please? Anyone? Uh, right there at the back, please. Thanks. Uh, one question. If you're working with teams, will be like, more recommended to work in the ones like Google Docs that already use this kind of like algorithm behind? Or will there be like a, a certain plus in using like a software specifically for this? Like, what would be your recommendation? Like, to use the ones that are like Google Docs, or to download yours and work the files and teams with another approach? Okay, thank you. Very good question. Um, so, I like for example, Google Docs is really great for working on the same thing simultaneously, real time. You're all in there working on the same file and it has this mechanism for it. Um, the Git system which I showed you is you have your project uh, kind of on a server, you get your clone, your copy of that, work on it yourself on your computer and other people work on it as well. They can chill, work on it and then you put everything together on the server and at that point you might have to resolve conflicts. So, um, so Google Docs is a cool way of 
really offering this live simultaneous thing. And there are also other tools for that as well. So I think that's kind of the main uh, differences, difference. When you really are there at the same time and um, can even like add comments live and change that. As with Git is, you can take it home to your computer, work on it, and then maybe from even more complex things, and then later send it to everyone. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.